we all give up. We did. We saw game four and we went, St. Louis is the better team. Now, there are some who are going to say, no, 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 I never gave up. Game four, I checked that comment section and that review. This, you know, there, there are games that I remember. So I got a couple of boxes of old score because I like to open old sets of cards, old boxes of cards, and I pulled out a stance meal. And I thought, you know, I've never done a video on stance meal. And Stan Smeal, his stats were never, you know, awe-inspiring. Played 851 games, 659 points. Had one goal this last year uh, due to strained knee ligaments, bruised back. And yet, he, he was Mr. Canuck. He was the guy who, out on the ice, was always... I'm going somewhere with this. He was always the guy that you could count on. He was the character guy. So while the Canucks weren't a very good team during most of the time he was in Vancouver, I could cheer for Stan Smeal. I could cheer for Stan Smeal when he dropped the gloves in a fight and got absolutely drilled and pummeled into the ground because he was, uh, yeah, 5'8", 190 pounds. 5'8", yeah, he's, yeah. But he, he was never scared of anybody. And he, he, he always played like a warrior so that even in defeat, I could say, man, they tried. Which brings me to tonight. The the Vancouver Canucks, this is the proudest I've been of a Vancouver Canucks team in a very long time. And Jacob Markstrom is starting to remind me of Kirk McLean. Now, Luongo was, I, I think, the best goalie the Canucks ever had. So don't take that as a slight to Luongo. But McLean, he was never really in that upper echelon like he was considered to be pretty darn good he was a leader in wins here and there and he was nominated for Vesna, but he was never really considered to be one of those you know top three or four guys overall and yet big games Kirk McLean could be really amazing and tonight Markstrom he saved them uh Markstrom prevented what looked like this was going to be a landslide for St. Louis and Markstrom made sure it wasn't so kudos to him and and kudos to the Canucks on not giving up and on Jake Vertanen for finally proving my faith in him right. And yet at the start of this game, when I saw he wasn't a, a healthy scratch and instead Zach, Zach McEwen was and Godette's in the lineup, I said, okay, I'm glad Godette's in the lineup. Why is Jake in there? Because the last couple of games, Jake Vertanen was, was not good. And, and I couldn't argue that he was on any level. Tonight proved a lot of doubters wrong. And I have to say, too, that they were talking about Tyler Mott and apparently Travis Green being asked why he was in the lineup. If anybody's going to ask why Tyler Mott's been in the Canucks lineup throughout despite not producing, you don't watch Canuck games then because Tyler Mott is absolutely a warrior. And in the last game where they were taken out 3-1 to one, and it wasn't really a close game, Mott was solid. Mott was very good in the last game. And in this game, he came through. So... Delay of game penalty really, really early on Jake Allen, which didn't go the way that I think maybe the Blues might have wanted it to. Uh, it it didn't, didn't, they didn't kill it off and then get a whole bunch of momentum out of that. So um, one other note too was Bortuzzo was in instead of Gunnarsson. Gunnarsson was out. And I thought Bortuzzo played really well. I'd be very surprised if he's not in there in the next game. In fact, he went end-to-end -end in the third period and I thought, that's 2020. Sure, Botuzo with an end-to-end -end rush. Why not? Um, shots were 3 nothing for the Canucks at five minutes, and you could tell. This is a team that knew. Vancouver knew if they lose tonight, they're done. If if Vancouver doesn't win this game tonight, it's over. Uh, you give you give St. Louis a 3-2 to series lead, it's it's not coming back. Uh, Gaudette looked pretty good early, uh, again, with McEwen out. Uh, the Canucks were definitely the better team I felt in the first half of that first period. They set the tone. They played very, very well. Pedersen had a chance that missed high. Honestly, Pedersen, they still controlled him pretty well. Pedersen really wasn't a huge factor tonight. It was the the grinders, the the, the greasy uh, chances that ended up being the story of tonight. Uh, Horvat's chance was denied as the Canucks were pressing. Uh, Shen was then denied as the Blues pushed back. And Shen was, I, I thought, absolutely dynamic at the start of this game, but the neutralization of him would happen as the game went along. Uh, Tanev takes a penalty, the Blues go to the power play, and I felt they needed a goal and the Canucks needed a stop. I thought, you know, 
we're still, you know, halfway into the first period, but whoever gets that first goal, it should be a key thing. And it felt like it was. Shorthanded, Mott, on an absolutely fantastic steal. On, on a, after, well, Petrangelo breaks his stick and immediately Mott's like, like, you know, on red meat and just straight through. I've been trying to think of some kind of a Mott's Clamato thing to do with Mott's name and nothing came to me. I was trying towards the end of this game to come up with some kind of a Mott nickname that I thought could work. But, um, I mean, Calamity's close to Clamato, but he's not a Calamity. He creates Calamities out there, but it's not a Mott's Calamity. That doesn't that doesn't work because it makes it sound like he's responsible for the mess and you make him clean it up. And Mott did clean up. He gets the goal at 13-15. It's a shorthanded marker. And it looked fantastic. And I'm sure there were people watching that going, where'd he get those hands? He's always had that. He just, that's not his role with Vancouver. Um, Markstrom denied Perron. Great power play chances after the power play's over. Braden Shen gets a goal from Sundquist at 15:41, So that tied up the game. And then there was another chance for Shen. And it looked to me like the Canucks were in serious danger here. This could really get out, get away from them. Hughes, definitely a puck wizard on the blue line. I thought Quinn Hughes, I noticed when he was pinching tonight, they were doing a better job covering for him, and there was a lot more communication while he was pinching, just something I took note of tonight. Allen made a save then on Hughes, and then with 29 seconds left, one of those goals that can really kneecap a team, uh, O'Reilly scores from Blay and Dunn, and it went in off Jordy Ben's stick. So it's one of those goals, last minute of a period, and maybe a little bit against the flow of the play, although the Blues were getting better as the period went along. So we go to the second period. The Blues got close to a 3-0 lead early, or a 3-1 lead early, I should say. Sutter then gets a penalty on a high stick that didn't actually touch the player, but back into the left, and then, you know, there you go. Uh, anyways, Blues power play. I thought it was funny to hear Bieksa talking about, you know, a guy flinging his head back when that was something that Kessler used to do a lot. A stick comes close to his face and he'd fling his head back. Drove me nuts. Even when he was a Kanaka, I'd be like, oh, come on, Kessler, come on. So, anyways, that shouldn't have been a penalty, but it was. And then on the power play, St. Louis strikes Sanford from Thomas and Bozak at 551. So, kudos to the Blues on getting that power play marker, being up 3-1. to one, And I put on the board, this game feels over. The Blues are in control. It's 3-1. to one. It's done. There was one player who definitely didn't give up. Jacob Markstrom. Jacob Markstrom decided, all right, can't allow another. Kind of a Grant Fear kind of stance. Like, all right, I've allowed three. You're not getting the fourth. And, yeah, uh, Thomas was denied of the 4-1 lead as the Canucks defense was kind of sort of porous at that stage. And it looked like St. Louis was just going to go through them at will. And they got a ton of shots in that second period. But the play starts to turn. So, Miller scores from Vertanen on 11.54, and JT Miller willed that one in. Like, that's just one of those ones that just, he willed that into the net. And the Canucks then pressed for the tie, and eventually, Vertanen gets a goal to go with his assist from Miller and Pedersen at 16.08, and all I put on the board is, about time, Jake. About time. This is Jake Vertanen. This is the guy who scored the goals during the regular season. This is the guy who scored some key goals, some big goals during the regular season. I know he has that in him. The, these were his first points of the playoffs. So Vertanen gets off the schneid, and uh, that tied up the game. And I thought, you know, if if this is tied going into the third, I'm proud of the Canucks no matter what happens. I'm at that stage now. I'm at that stage where if anybody's going to say, oh, Shannon's just going to rage. Remember that game one against Minnesota? It's going to happen again. Wait for it. It's not. I am proud of, of anything that the Canucks accomplish from here on. If, if the Blues end up knocking them out in seven, Say la vie. I, I honestly am so proud of this team for what they've done. And again, that's why I think of the Stan Smeal Canucks and, and 1989 comes to mind when they pushed Calgary to seven and I was so proud of the team then even though they, they didn't win. Um, Mott, a guy who would have fit in right, right with those 1989 Vancouver Canucks. Mott scores from Sutter and Stetcher at 1817. Initially, they gave it to him unassisted, which I thought looked better. I thought, how badass does it look if he has two unassisted goals? Come on, guys. Get on my back. I'll take you. And Mott gets the fourth goal. And that was when it hit my brain of um, what just happened here. It was 3-1. to one. The Blues are in control. And what happened was Markstrom. Markstrom wasn't allowing anything. And then uh, Kairu Skate came up. 
Uh, it caught Edler in the ear. Edler immediately leaves the ice to the point where I believe it was Cairo that actually motioned to the referee, knew that Edler was in trouble, and that's it. We've got to blow the whistle here and get him out of here. Um, it didn't look good. He didn't come back into the game. Uh, we'll see how many stitches he needs and whether or not he's able to come back into the next game. And I would think full cage if he does come in for the next game. It's just one of those things where, you know, it just the skate catches him. Kyra's going down, his skate comes up, and it's one of those fluke things. Kyra had no idea where his skate was. And and you could even see the referee talking to Travis Green and Green going, I'm not new. Like, along the lines of, I'm not new, it was a skate. It was a skate cut. I'm not looking for a penalty. Like, I, like it was just, it was kind of this weird exchange. Like, it was just one of those fluke things. No, I'm, you know, I'm not mad about it because it just happens. So, you know, I mean, unless you can prove that he intentionally kicked his skate up, which, yeah, Green Green has his limits. I know he complains a lot, and he there's a lot of sarcasm from him whenever there's penalties called in the Canucks, but this was not one of those times that he got upset because there wasn't a call. Uh, Last-minute chances then for the Blues. So we're going into the third. The Canucks have a one-goal lead, and in my brain I'm going, okay, so the Canucks have a one-goal lead, but they're going to be without Edler. This means more time for Stetcher and more time for Fantenberg. And, and I, I do get concerned about overplaying Stetcher. It's sort of the Ben Hutton role. Ben Hutton can be a very useful defenseman as long as you don't overplay him. Stetcher can be very useful if you don't overplay him. So third period, and again, no Edler. And I felt that's a huge loss for this team. He was number three on their ice time list uh, during the game at that point. Uh, slow start. Uh, and I feel I felt this period probably decides the series. I threw that on the board. I said this period probably decides the series. In all likelihood. Uh, Barbashev takes a penalty in the Canucks zone. You can't take penalties in the other zone. High stick or even if it's a fluke, one of those things that just happens, you, you can't. So high stick on JT Miller. The Canucks go to the power play. Solid penalty kill. Only one shot allowed by St. Louis. St. Louis's penalty kill has adapted to the Canucks power play. They're not getting the chances that they were in the first two games of the series. Physical battles. Perron versus Mott was going on up the ice while they're trying to just knock it off, knock it off. And, I mean, these are situations where you could blow the whistle and throw them both in the box for two. Uh, for enforcement, like conduct, roughing, cross-check, whatever you want. They, you could have thrown them both in the box, but they're trying not to. So, I have to say, too, one of the things I was proud of with Vancouver tonight was, you know, St. Louis is a big physical team, and the Canucks kind of tonight went, all right, we'll, we'll do that. And while the hit numbers are about the same as usual, it felt different. It felt like every time St. Louis threw a hit, Vancouver stood up to it. And that was impressive. Uh, Markstrom denied Bozak. Bozak was a warrior in this game, too. It's not on the board, but he had a shot block that he then sort of helicoptered around and got the puck out. Fantastic play by Bozak. Surprised that he didn't get knocked out of the game from that. But he's a warrior as well. There's plenty of them on both teams in this series. Uh, 7.32 left, Blay, high sticking penalty, Canucks go to the power play, and again, the penalty kill for the Blues comes through. Their penalty kill, fantastic. Uh, I, I think that uh, the, the Canucks days of being able to just take that penalty kill apart are pretty much, pretty much gone. Um, so, Perron couldn't jam one home with 4.12 left. And this is one of those, Markstrom was set. Now, Markstrom was giving me fits. We'll come back to that. But he, he stood up. He he was good. Uh, Canucks pressed to keep Allen in net. So it was one of those situations where the Blues are probably trying to get him out. And the Canucks just kept it up at center ice. Made sure they had possession in their own zone. Made sure that Barubi was delayed as long as possible from getting Allen out of the net. Uh, goalie pull with a minute and 30 seconds left. And then there was an iffy icing call at 57.9 seconds. Remember I said yesterday how these guys are going back for the icing calls and they're skating like they're they're in mud and oh hey i can't get there oh it's an icing shucks i was trying so hard yeah okay but that's that's fine these things happen they happen for both teams just when your heart's in your in your your throat because you're thinking could this actually happen that's the worst time for that to happen so the empty net was then missed by miller again i'm like okay yeah of course of course the canucks missed the empty net yep yeah. and then the blues come down and get a bunch of pressure because of course they do and then, as the horn sounding, the Blues celebrate like it went in, and the goal horn goes off for St. Louis, which left me saying, I'm having Colorado flashbacks, but now it's in favor of St. Louis. How do I feel? I feel like if this goes to overtime, I'm going to be angry. 
But on replay, it showed that A, the puck didn't completely cross the line, and B, the clock had expired before the attempt was made to cross the line. So, whew, they escape by the skin of their teeth. Markstrom doing a lot of snow angels, coming out to play the puck a lot, and misplaying a couple of times. I may have said a few times, could you stay in the net, Marky? And what are, what are you doing? But it all works. It all works out. So this is, what, and again, that might be the Kirk McLean thing right there, because Kirk McLean definitely had games where you're like, what, Kirk, stay, stay in the net. Not as bad as Kluche. Kluche, bless him, he tried, but Dan Kluche, man. All right, Vancouver wins. They have a 3-2 to two series lead over St. Louis. Again, I could not be prouder of, of the Vancouver Canucks. And bizarrely, a team designated the home team has now not lost, Hannes has now not won any of the first five games in this series, which mirrors St. Louis's first round experience with, with the Winnipeg Jets last year. It's bizarre, except the Jets were the home team in games one and two and game five. So game six went to St. Louis. Does that mean Vancouver wins game six? No, that's not how, how hockey works. Uh, the shots in this did favor the Blues. 12-11 uh, in the first, 18-13 in the second, 9-6 in the third, 39-30 overall in favor of St. Louis. Your star of the game is Jacob Markstrom. I don't need to see the three stars because he is the star of the game. Uh, with Mott getting an honorable mention as well. Uh, power plays Vancouver 0 for 3. Like I said, they just it's not the same. Uh, 1 for 2 for St. Louis. Markstrom 36 saves on 39 shots. Allen saved 26 out of 30. As a final note... I want to add that they were advertising a lot tonight on the Canadian feed. So this is, I know there's a lot of American viewers to this channel. HowardChuckStrong.com. Uh, they're selling t-shirts and the proceeds go to charities that are, um, or were supported by Dale Howardchuck. So um, with that on my television, I went, all right, went straight to the site and immediately ordered two shirts. One for myself and one for my wife. Because, again, you know, the money goes to charity and... It's, it's one of those least I could do kind of things. So I will mention it here in the video, HowardChuckStrong.com. And, you know, it's it's always good to, to look at, at, a, at a, a tragic situation and try to have some good come out of it. So that's how Meetup started on this channel was you had a, a terrible accident that takes place. And I said, you know what, let's let's play floor hockey to kind of, you know, as a in the memory of, of, of you know, this, this subscriber that perished in the accident. And then meetups were happening all over the place, and it started because of that. So you can you can definitely have good things come out of tragic situations. So I do uh, suggest to people, hey, if you get a chance to go there and, and buy a t-shirt, go right on ahead. So uh, there you go. Uh, Vancouver wins this one 4-3. to three. They take a 3-2 to two series lead. And Markstrom takes a 3-2 to two series lead. Are we past the point of people questioning Markstrom yet? Because at the start of this series, there were plenty of people questioning Markstrom, and oh, maybe they should have Demko in. And I'm like, what? He had one bad game against Minnesota, just one, and everybody's ready to jump off of his bandwagon. He's been pretty good for a while. So maybe they finish it, maybe they don't. But either way, they've won three games against the Blues, and it sort of reminds me of a plucky Canucks team back in 1989. And that's kind of fun. Although this team does have more pure talent than that 1989 team did thank you guys so much for watching for all your support and do hit like and subscribe the channel passed 157,000 subscribers tonight that's ridiculous i haven't even done the video for 150,000 subscribers yet i was planning that as soon as the hockey slows down a little bit which it does tomorrow so i've added another 7,000 since then it's just thank you thank you for all of your support for the comments for the likes for the shares for all that it all helps and hey we will do this again tomorrow, but remember the games are much later and there's just two of them. So most of tomorrow won't necessarily just be hockey. Thanks for everything. I will talk to you again soon.